education and leadership. It is a big deal. If we're going to have any discussion about education and how to improve the public schools, a primary issue that we have to tackle is that of leadership. What role should an effective leader play in our schools? And what effect can that leadership have on the success in the public school system? Now, these are very difficult questions to answer, and you have a lot of really bright people on both sides of this argument. You have some that say that the principal that leads the least is the principal that leads the best. You also have those that say that leadership really doesn't make that big of a difference because there are too many societal factors that are at play in determining whether or not a child is able to learn. The leadership within the school and the managing of the school actually it makes very little difference there. But I'm here to say that we've learned too much about the role of leaders in successful schools to underestimate the part that they play. So today we're going to talk about leadership and specifically a type of leadership that's been shown to have a great effect on school achievement. And we call this model instructional leadership. So before we go into what actually instructional leadership is and how to define it, uh, first I think it's important that we give a brief history of how instructional leadership develops. Now we can say instructional leadership had its origins in the 1960s when the U.S. Department of Education commissioned a man named James Coleman to conduct a study regarding the effectiveness of the American public school system. Now, this was a massive study. At the time, it was the largest study the federal government had ever commissioned on education. This report was called the Equality of Educational Opportunity Report, but it would become known throughout the field simply as the Coleman Report. Now, in this report, which was released in 1966, the primary findings indicated that the determining factor involved in students' ability to learn and succeed in the schools was the student's family background and economic background. The study indicated that the schools and other characteristics such as leadership and investment actually had much less to do with the student's actual ability to learn. 